All right, welcome, welcome to I think episode fifty-four. I'm sitting here in the dark. Uh, whatever. It's either fifty-four. No, I think this is fifty-five. Episode fifty-five of my FX buddies, the podcast. <sighs> and I've been having technical difficulties. I could have done this way earlier. It's 8.30, it's mm, Thursday, May 9th, but this still should get posted as of May 9th. All right, and it will cover news from May 8th and May 9th, because I didn't record yesterday, because it was kind of boring yesterday. Plus, we were waiting for May 9th, the World Trade Organization, which nothing happened, did it? Okay, but before I get into that, the blog. The blog is at myfxbuddies.blogspot.com, and you're welcome to go there. That's where all the articles, the articles, because that's what I focus on, are articles. They're posted there in full with the link to them. Um, RSS.com, My FX Buddies, has a transcript, so if you can't understand what I'm saying, you can get a little assistance there. Um, if you're a paid subscriber to Spotify.com, they'll also have the video, but not, uh, you know, not the articles or anything. But anywhere you enjoy this content, if there's a more information or description box, if you can click there, it will show a link to the blog. All right. Uh, if you are listening to this on YouTube, and notice I said listening, it appears you're watching the video, but you're not. So below the box that looks like a video, look for the word more, click on the word more, and the link to the blog is there. All right, so let's get into it. So I do want to show you, it's May 9th. So this morning, early in the morning, Oh no, the ninth is gone now. Doggone it. I went to WTO.org. Very simple. WTO.org. And over here, you can see here, it says meetings. If I had done this earlier, May 9th was here. And it said Ascension Day. So they were calling it Ascension Day. But it is a WTO non-working day. So, no one in Denarland thought to go there and check to see if it was a working day. So, I'm not quite sure why people thought that there was going to be this grand announcement about Iraq getting into the WTO. But, Tish, it's just that, that's, that's, you're just looking at that. Okay, even tomorrow is a non-working day. You see that? May 10th non-working day for WTO um let's see WTO membership joining you can go right here to ascensions my computer's running slow because of the um, software the recording software ascensions in progress Scroll down. Oh, look at that. There's a rock. They're still in progress. So, you can, don't argue with me. Go to the source. The source that should show you what. Right? So, there it is. A rock is not a fully ascended member of the World Trade Organization. Alright? So, does that mean the RV can't happen? No, it does not mean that. Nothing is stemmed on that. Or I don't know. The, it's. But you know what? I know people aren't going to listen to me because I'm just me and I'm no one. But in any case, when there's something, you can go look up yourself. Go look it up yourself. Okay? Because there were a lot of people who were down, distressed, lost. Well, what does that mean? They're not in the WTO. It means nothing. Okay? That's my opinion. But, and then also, I know there's new people to me 
um, in 2014, there was an article that came out. And it was a woman, and this was way back. <laughs> like now they have women in business, you know, business positions like um, Miss Sammy being the first, she's probably the first female um, finance minister, right? So they've made big strides to lift women and all of that. This was before all of that, okay? 2014, they put out an article that said, the project of zero, the project to delete the zeros has been put on hold because of ISIS. And they even gave, I, I'm pretty sure it was five years. They said it's on hold for five years. And we were like, oh, that can't be right because it's supposed to happen tomorrow, right? No one believed it until five years later. Well, ISIS came, ISIS was overtaken. Um, yeah, so if... In 2014, they were ready to do the, because remember, they don't call it RV. They call it Project to Delete the Three Zeros. So if they were ready to do that in 2014, and they were nowhere near as close to being ready to take a fully ascended position in the WTO, then it doesn't matter. That That's my logic, right? But whatever. Okay, so enough of that. All right, um, so here's the namesake article of the blog today. The Iraqi Central Bank informs France of the plan to restructure government banks. And there's another title. This is a pretty big article for today. Sometimes the, sometimes the headlines won't even mention France. And, but, so, Aliyah Locke met with, whoever this guy is who is he patrick durrell french ambassador to baghdad so they met and they talked about all this stuff which is great the plan to restructure government banks which enjoys support and regular follow-up by the prime minister indicating that this Oh, excuse me. I think I left this part out. The meeting also clarified the plan to restructure government banks, which enjoys support and regular follow-up by the Prime Minister, Sadani, indicating that this plan will change the map of the banking sector and its reality in Iraq. And that's one of the titles is the plan to restructure government banks will change the map of its reality let's see what else mm. rapid developments and organizing monitoring analyzing foreign transfer operations and covering foreign trade all this stuff they're receiving great praise and attention from international and regional organizations see so all of this is great Great, great, great. But it is noteworthy that Central Bank of Iraq owns deposits and accounts with the Central Bank of France. And they have had distinguished cooperation relations over many years. Yeah, so great. All right. So these are all from yesterday, May 8th. So here... This was in the morning. Sadani receives U.S. Undersecretary of State. And there's more people in the room, I believe. But this picture is just showing those two. And so the first article that came out was just that. It was the title, the picture, and this little sentence right here. <laughs> then another article came out, and this is what it said. Al Sadani told an American official, what is happening in the G word, um, Aza, put a G in front of that, is unprecedented and amounts to, I don't know if I can say that word, but um, when a group of people are distinguished, no, not distinguished, dis, <laughs> uh, what's the word? terminated when a group of people are terminated all at once basically 
right? Okay, so if you're not following me, there's a word there that I'm not going to say. But he also said some other things. They have keenness to strengthen their democratic system. Um, they fight back. They want to fight back repression and uh, attacks, terror attacks. Okay. And this sentence right here, this paragraph right here is very key. It talks about what's happening in that four letter word that I didn't say, won't say, is unprecedented, a blatant violation of human rights and amounts to a group of people being terminated all at once. Um, noticing that most of the victims are women and children, according to reports from international organizations, stressing the need to make more efforts to stop that three-letter word for conflict that starts with W and ends with R against the pizza land people because Iraq cares more about the pizza land people and we care more about or I don't want to say care but if you take a side Iraq and most of the other nations in that region they side on the pizza land side we side on the ice cream land side right so here and he was very vocal um about his feelings right so mm, how do you respond to that i would love to hear how we responded to that <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so so then that was in the morning, okay? Later in the day, Sudani gets a phone call. Al Sudani receives a phone call from the head of the HAM, with two letters after that, political bureau. The head of their political bureau. What a coincidence is that? And I don't believe in coincidences. The very same day he meets with the U.S. Secretary under whatever people, he gets a phone call from them talking about the movement. So, yes, that is um, very interesting. And so that is why i think until that gets resolved we could still be sitting here waiting and i think yeah i have officially moved to september if you didn't know already i've given up on june and i'm in september hoping believing it could go any day everything's ready there's well iraq does need to pass some laws laws that protect investors and um, things like that so um, but for the most part the mechanisms and technology and banks and all of that are ready to go okay so let's see what else um, here's another article about Iran frozen or banned an Iranian official reveals the fate of Tehran's money in Baghdad. So see, here's yet another instance where they seem to be working together. Tehran's money is in an Iraqi bank, Commercial Bank of Iraq, and we pay them through, I think it's Oman, yes. So they go through Oman to get their money. but. Also, they're still Iran is still going to sell um, gas and electricity or the gas to make the electricity, whatever, for six more years. So yeah, why do they have when they have Jordan, they have Egypt, they have um, Siemens just made those contracts. 
GE just made those contracts. Why do they still need to get gas for electricity from Iran? Hmm. Because the two countries are intertwined. All right. And there's more evidence. All right. Let's see. Iraqi Airways preparing to open a new line to China. Uh, we have that. What was the other thing they were getting ready? A bank, right? The Chinese bank was going to open in Iraq. All right. So that's that. Let's see. So yesterday they did not bring the um, budget schedules to Parliament. So they said, well, let's let's just wait one more day. We might, we'll have a session. and Let's vote to see if we're going to stay 30 days longer. Okay, so that was yesterday. This is a long article. All right. Um, so next article. This guy pledges to merchants and companies from Tehran. That's Iran. To overcome obstacles. Yeah, so supplying goods to Iraq, stressing the endeavor to expand trade and exchange with Iran. <laughs> so more molding together, <laughs> commercial exchange and project implementation. Yes, 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 yes. All right, so you could read that. Okay. All right. Um, look at this conclusion of a workshop in Cyprus. Who wouldn't go to Cyprus? Conclusion of conclusion of a workshop in Cy Cyprus. Jeez Louise, my brain. Okay, on mechanisms for controlling strategic trade in Iraq. So there's the lovely people who attended uh, the workshop on implementing. Strategic Trade Control Systems in Iraq, organized by, look at this, Cyclops. It says that. Cyclops Center, specialized in border and port security, was concluded in Cyprus. So there's just all kinds of deals being done. Okay, we already talked about that. Uh, let's see. The Iraqi trade break, according to Mohammed Saleh, and Mohammed Saleh has been in the news like every day this week, I think. He did two speeches today. Well, now it's yesterday for them. So I'm like, are they going to let him be the one to announce the RV? <laughs> but anyway, so uh, Mohammed Saleh, the Iraqi trade bank, jeez Louise, trade bank is considered one of the state's banking arms and operates on three levels. But the main part of this is, he explained that bank practices, the, the bank practices international banking. Yay! So it offers loans to develop the private sector with the aim of stimulating investment and enhancing economic growth rates. What else? Recovering bad debts. And there's one other. Anyway, all right, so here's another um, member of parliament, Mr. Fatlawi. <laughs> I, how can you not remember that name, right? America does not intend to leave while the government shakes hands with it economically. So see right there. You know how I'm always saying it's a carrot and stick. We're holding it over their head. Uh, he just said that. So. Um, they need to realize, or maybe they're coming to the realization, and that's why they're using the word partnership relations, because they finally figured out, okay, they're not going anywhere, so we need to learn to work with them. He continued, the withdrawal of the Americans from Iraq is a public political demand that the government must implement, noting that during the coming period, we may witness a scheduling of exit and gradual withdrawal due to pressure. Then there's a little bit more, but we don't need that. Here, the uh, pizza land issue is in the mind of Iraqis 
and the crimes of the occupation are unparalleled. And who's the occupation? Could be ice cream land, could be America, right? And there's a nice big room full of people that Sudani was speaking to. So you could read that. It goes into the history of ISIS and how they defeated ISIS. And then there's all these points here. So yeah. Um, out. Union of Arab Banks. Iraq's environment is encouraging for investment and a pivotal role for the banking sector. So you can read this. I mean, it's all good things we want to hear, but doesn't mean we're going to the bank tomorrow. Um, what? what? Oh, here, there is a part at the bottom. I, I bolded that. You could read that. But this has been over for a day, maybe even two days. And you see they're still talking about it. They're still referencing it. Okay, here's my one commercial. Have you filed for your self-employed tax credit? If you haven't, go to my blog, click on this, and see if you qualify. And what makes you qualify if you filed a Schedule C in 2020 or 2021? All right, so now on to today's articles. I already told you the two most significant ones that there was no WTO announcement, not even a mention of it anywhere. <laughs> uh, anyway, and then the CBI governor talking to the French ambassador about the probably rapid and extreme changes they're going to make to the banking sector. So the prime minister's financial advisor, Mohamed Saleh, reduces the risk of the budget deficit. And he has to have all these long, drawn-out conversations. But we know once they change the rate and start, so they'll change the rate, they'll have those laws passed that protect investors, right? Um, oh, there may be people that don't know. There's laws about outlawing extortion, outlawing kidnapping, blackmail, things that you wouldn't think you'd have to have a law in the books that says you can't do this. They have laws and they're just waiting, right? They have probably been approved 50 times, but they haven't been fully approved and put in the Gazette, so they're not technically in I don't know what word in effect right so yeah then all this work is going to come in and there will not be a deficit okay so but because it has to look like they're doing something when he gets asked about these things he has to give answers and he gave a quite lengthy answer he went through history here he's talking about because oil and the budget is $70 per barrel, and oil's been 80 plus for a while, we're good, right? <laughs> then um, he's talking about how there used to be no commitments from European and international funds, but now there are, so we're going to be good. All right, so that was one uh, speech. Well, not a speech so much like he was at a podium, but uh, it, he was... Uh, asked the qu the question was posed to him, and he gave it a statement. There we go, a statement. All right, what is this one? Oh, this was a pretty big deal too. Sadani announces the signing of an agreement with Japan to finance small and medium enterprises. It was at some kind of mill, M I L L. And uh, he gave a speech, and it was on TV. And you can see all the things here. It's it's going to make or whatever a mill does. And then there was also another place. Here he cut the ribbon. But he went to another place. Mm, I can't remember what that place did. Same thing. I don't think he gave as long of a speech. That one wasn't televised, like the one for this place. Um. And also, I think we'll get into it, but he signed a package of projects. Also, he went to a different, he went to Basra, I think, or Babylon. One of the places starts with a B, 
and talk to them about all the projects they're going to be getting and the jobs and everything. But here, Trade Bank of Iraq joins my account project. The importance of this is the people, the Kurds were unhappy because all the banks that were part of that my account program were all banks that could be influenced by the Barzanis and the Talibanis. And they didn't feel safe, right? But now, Trade Bank of Iraq is involved, and um, they're saying, "Look, you have no, you know, they can't interfere with them or influence them to do something they shouldn't do. So you should feel better." But there's still a small group of people that are planning a demonstration, and I I haven't seen when they're going to do it, but they are planning it. Okay. Oh, here, uh, no, no, no. This is another delegation from Baghdad visits Iran to facilitate process of exporting agricultural crops to Iraq. So here again, Iraq can build their own, I mean, grow their own fruits. Plus, I believe there's still a ban in place. Remember the people, the last time that um, Iran attacked, I think they shot up someplace in Kurdistan, right? And then the people went on a ban items from Iran. But here they are making roads, pathways, bridges <laughs> for more of their produce to be imported because the two countries are closely tied together. All right, what's this? Um there's Sadani out shaking hands. Al Sadani confirms the unlimited support from the government to develop the success story in the private sector. So I think this is still about that mill, but it has a different title and has a little bit more information too. Fierce competition in the Iraqi banking sector. National banks are searching for survival. So still, you know, they're, I don't want to say complaining, voicing their displeasure that foreign banks are coming into Iraq and getting better access to the dollar than they are. All right, and this is pretty lengthy, easy to read too. So here's the speech that Mohammed Saleh gave. The Securities Commission represents the governance base for promoting financial market reform. And I don't know where this was. Oh, it had some, oh, it may be at the Securities Commission's building. So he gave a speech during the 20th anniversary of the founding of the Securities Commission. And just so you know, he's been in this position. Well, he's been in government for 42 years. So 20 years ago, he was probably there when they opened this building. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's probably why they had him speak. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, and this was on TV also. They didn't, now for Sudani's speech, they preempted their regular show, which was news at that time. And they showed Sudani's speech. It wasn't long. Um, uh, Muhammad Saleh's speech, they showed pieces of it. But yeah, so... It just talks about pricing, um, the supervising and correcting rules, monitoring irregular activities, and investigating market violations. So, big, good news, good news, right? And the last sentence, by, um, <laughs> oh, maybe I have to read this whole paragraph. Okay, it's okay, because we're almost done. There is no secret of the important role played by the Securities Commission in coordination with international securities organizations and bodies, especially in adopting standards in the field of strengthening the efficiency of financial markets and communicating with international organizations related to financial markets, which has strengthened the role of the Securities Commission and the Iraqi Stock Exchange. Finance and preparing Iraq for the World Trade Organization. So see, they're preparing for it. They're not in it yet, but 
they're preparing for the world trade organization which is the international organization that essentially emerged from the system of financial globalization as the trade and financial services became an integral part of global trade so they've come a long way you've come a long way baby jp morgan forecasts an increase in the oil capacity of iraq and other countries in 2025 so there's jp morgan looking into 2025 because they know they're going to be there for a long time also they're looking at the uae and kazakhstan all right and i think is this the last article no oh wait also the unless i didn't put it here here the chairman of the securities commission he spoke at the same event he confirmed the stock market is witnessing unprecedented financial activity during the current government he indicated that the average daily trading movement in the market reached three million and it says arrow there not sure what that means but yeah so that was a pretty big deal today okay this all shakily confirms the government's endeavor to put the economy on the right track now i just like the wording so he's an economist today if the banking institution in a country is reformed the rest of its economic activity will be reformed and the risks to which it may be exposed will be avoided and then also the world today has become a large village and Iraq is a part of it. Isn't that neat? So that's a way of saying global, what is it? A global, uh, global community? We've become a global, I can't remember. Um, so anyway, I just like their wording. Okay, so you could read the rest of that if you like um yeah okay and what's this parliament comments on sudanese plan to restructure the government apparatus it needs radical reform mm, we've heard that before right and it has been you have to admit they've done some pretty radical reform in a short time okay so there's one more i think no nope. Uh, here's another article about Iran. Oh, Iran warns America of dire consequences if it allows Bibi to commit new crimes in Rafa. And that was in Iraq's news. I didn't have to go look for that. It was right there in Iraq's news. Oh, and here's the one. We will continue to export gas to Iraq. For another five years all right and oh yes we'll close with these two so they did um the parliament did meet and um they informed no nope. well this is good you could read this if you want to um informs us of the reasons for the government not voting on the budget schedules but i don't think they're telling the truth anyway but you see they talk about deficit the large deficit yeah please but anyway and it's not the entire budget that has to be reviewed it's just the budget schedules right we know that okay so the house of representatives adjourns its session and they said we're done we're done we'll be back on june 9th oh doggone it i have the wrong one here <sighs> well i'll put the right one here i'll have to put the right one here but they did so when when they go when parliament goes on their official break they put out this ends the 
legislation session for blah 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 per the constitution we have 30 days we'll be back on june 9th but because there's two articles because there's two uh issues that are you know pretty serious should they come before us we'll come back so they did say that i apologize for not having it here but i will put it here okay and then later the house of representatives decides to extend its first legislation term by 30 days but this is not the official notice like the other one was you know what i'm gonna pause you hold on hey i apologize i felt really bad for not having this is like important and i didn't have the right <laughs> The right article. The Iraqi parliament enters its legislative recess and requires holding an extraordinary or extraordinary session on two matters. See, so a member of the Iraqi parliament announced on Thursday the House of Representatives will enter its legislative recess starting tomorrow, Friday. Blah, blah, blah. It begins, the second legislative term will begin next june 9th um here's the two matters right if the position of speaker of the house of representatives is agreed upon or the budget tables are sent to the house parliament will hold an extraordinary or emergency session to discuss any important event during the legislative recess right so they put that out so starting tomorrow May 10th, they should be going on recess, right? But then someone says, based on Article 58 of the Constitution, the presidency of the House of Representatives decided to expand, extend the first legislative term for the third legislative year in the fifth electoral cycle for a period of 30 days. So it's still ambiguous. <laughs> right so we still don't know but i do believe they'll go they'll go on break and should the schedules be presented to them next week they'll probably come back and do what they need to do so we'll see so that's another thing we have to look out for all right so tomorrow's friday i probably won't post unless there's something really spectacular that's post worthy and then Sudani also, I believe, is leaving to Italy tomorrow. So, yeah. All right. So, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you, again, I I don't like all the confusion that gets out there because we just listen to what people say. And But sometimes that's all we can do, right? I don't have boots on the ground. I don't have government context so i have a group i choose to listen to for their information but if there's things that i can go look up myself i also do that too and i know not everyone can do that you don't have the time i understand so that's why i do that and i hope that you see i am just presenting what's there i'm not trying to sway anybody on anything uh yeah just want you to hang in there all right so if there's a follow join whatever button wherever you're enjoying this content click that swipe that tap that whatever so the next time i do post you will be notified if all things work as they're supposed to all right enjoy the rest of your morning night noon. if i don't talk to you again enjoy your weekend too right but i I will try not to go more than two days because then we're here at 40 minutes doing this, right? All right. So uh, accumulate while we wait for the rate to appreciate. Don't skip any meals and pay all your bills. Until next time, enjoy the rest of your morning, noon, night, whatever time frame you're enjoying this content.